Hello everyone, I'm back with an innovative video which will explain a subtopic of chapter Fiber to Fabric in the form of a story and our story will be narrated by my little puppets. So here I start with my presentation. Today I want you to meet two of my puppets. One is Rani Indumati and the other one is Gungru. These two are the characters of my story that I am going to share with you today. Surprising na? Story in a science class? Let me begin. Rani Indumati is the queen of a territory in Rajasthan and Gungru is the daughter of a helper in her palace. One fine day, Rani Indumati observes this little girl Gungru looking closely at herself in the mirror. Oh my my! Who is this pretty girl in the mirror? I'm sorry, Your Highness. I was looking into the mirror. I wish I could ever dress up like you and look like you. Oh, why do you think like that? You are even so pretty. No, look at my clothes. Shabby and dull. Yours are so shining and exquisite. Your Highness, how come there is so much difference between the texture of the cloth materials? It must be very expensive now, isn't it? This is because of the different threads used to weave the fabric. Yours one is extracted from plants and the one I am wearing is a gift of an insect. Insects? Are you serious? You want to say that this lustrous cloth is outcome of the insects? I plead your highness. If you could enlighten my mind with the relevant facts associated with it. Okay, okay, Gungru. That's my pleasure. But before that, it is important to know about the life cycle of the silkworm. Silkworm? What is that? Is it the name of a special kind of insect? Hold on to your horses, Gungru. I am here to suffice all your relevant questions. The name of this special kind of insect is silkworm and this shiny lustrous material of my dress is silk. These silkworm produce the silk fibers. Seems really interesting. How do these tiny creatures produce fibers and at what stage? The life cycle of a silk moth begins when a female moth lays its eggs during summer season. These eggs then hatch in the spring season and caterpillar emerge out. Is this caterpillar very small? Yes, actually it is very small when it emerges out. But it grows surprisingly large in the larva stage as it feeds continuously on mulberry leaves for about 27 to 30 days. And another noticeable thing in this stage of its life is molting. Molting? What's that? I have never heard of it. Molting is a process of shedding skin. The larvae shed their skin four times and the larvae then spins the fine silk filament and covers itself with these fibers. You know, this covering is named as cocoon. And this stage of its life cycle is pupa. That means the worm gets packed up in a shiny case. Exactly. Gradually, this pupa changes into the moth which comes out of the cocoon. The female moth lays eggs and the cycle continues. Okay, really interesting life cycle. But how do we get silk? Actually, the cocoons are boiled and from these cocoons, the silk fibers are reeled out. Thank you so much, Your Highness, for this information. But one thing that is bothering me is the killing of those worms inside the cocoons. Yes, Gungru, I do understand. But even you have put my mind to some more thoughts. Is this worth killing insects and getting fibers? So, the life cycle of the silk moth ends up here. Now, this was about a small topic from the chapter Fiber to Fabric. 
we'll meet again with another video soon stay happy stay healthy bye